For the next part of this show, uh, this is a history expose. And um, this piece um, is in essence an overlap of the piece last week we did on the black nobility. And it's part of a book by Fritz Springmeister, who is clearly an insider in the elite circles along with agencies to have garnered this level of information as far back as 1991, before the internet revolution in terms of shared data. Now, I'm going to preface it, is that Fritz makes some very good points within this piece that is useful to your understanding of our past history. And we have covered um, extensively ourselves in From Russia With Love and also From Russia With Love Plus. But in this piece, his leanings towards re religiosity kind of sends some parts of his narrative off. It's a bit like the questioner of the Rosenthal interview. He didn't get what he was already told. And, it, and so the narrative then has to fit in with the biblical leanings. But he said this, in mockery and imitation of God's 12 tribes, Satan blessed 12 bloodlines. And one of these bloodlines was the Ishmaeli bloodline, from which a special elite line developed alchemy, assassination techniques and other occult practices. Now, one bloodline was Egyptian, Celtic, Druidic, from which Druidism was developed out of Egypt again. One bloodline was from the Orient and developed Oriental magic, subgrade. Right. One lineage was from Canaan and the Canaanites, and it had the name Astarte, then Astorga, then Ashtor, and then Astor, the Astor family. The tribe of Dan was used as a Judas Iscariot type seed. The royalty of the tribe of Dan have descended down through history as a powerful satanic bloodline. The 13th or final bloodline was copied after God's royal lineage of Jesus. Oops. This was the satanic house of David with their blood, which they believe is not only from the house of David, but also from the lineage of Jesus, who they claim had a wife and children. The 13th satanic bloodline was instilled with the direct seed of Satan so that they would not only carry Christ's blood but also the blood of his brother, Lucifer. Oh dear. And he said, in his research of high-level Satanists, it became clear that the bloodline was the key in their minds was the house of David, not Jesus Christ's lineage. And he discovered that the house of David had set up a kingdom in southern France. I discovered this while rummaging through history books on the Middle Ages, and I came upon a book, A Jewish Princeton in Feudal France, 1868 through 900. And Fritz says, this book was the key for me to realise that the Merovingian dynasty, which wove its bloodline into the royal bloods of Europe, was Jewish in origin. When I read the Holy Blood, Holy Grail, it became apparent that the author's theory of Jesus' bloodline had clouded their realisation that the key was that the Priory, the Sion, was of the house of David and was in this sense Jewish although most of the priory the Sion are most likely not attending synagogues 
Now, that message aligns with our message of these people are not Jews per se. Hebrew and Anaki, in my opinion. But also the quote in the Bible of beware of those who say they are Jews, but are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. And Fritz went on, he said, indeed, the grand master of the Priory de Sion, Pierre Plantard de Saint Clair, which is Saint Clair in English, or Saint Clair, told them so much. To quote the pertinent paragraph from the Messianic le Legacy, a tour meeting in April 1982, M. Plantard adopted an ambivalent attitude towards our book Holy Blood, Holy Grail. On the whole, he said he endorsed it and offered to correct for the French edition certain vague or unclear references. And at the same time, he would neither confirm nor deny our thesis that the Merovingian bloodline was descended from Jesus. But there was no evidence either way, he said non-committally. It was all too far in the past, all too long ago. There were no reliable genealogies besides Jesus had brothers, he said. But nevertheless, he acknowledged that the Merovingians, to have been of Judaic de descent, deriving from the royal line of David. Now, there's only one <coughs> glaring issue here. And like I said, people are blinded by their religious programming. Except the entity known as Jesus was not Jewish. Walter Rosenthal and others have confirmed that. So the Merovingians, like the Carolingians, are all part of the sub grey race. And they're wrapping biblical narratives into their story, not ours. Now, Fritz said the significance of this, tr of this tremendous news, it means that those people who have been saying that it is a Jewish conspiracy have been correct, even if some of these people saying these things may not have been the greatest characters. And he said this also opens the door as to why top leaders of the Illuminati have been willing to work with the Ashkenazi Jews. And in his book, Be Wiser Serpents, he shows Masonic sources that there is indeed a big connection at the top with the Jewish leadership and the House of David and also Freemasonry. And that the goals of Freemasonry are intertwined with the goals of the Priory de Sion. Indeed. But why are they all connected? Because all three follow the path, all that emanated out of Egypt is why. Masonry, like the fake religion Mormonism, is riddled with Egyptian symbology and narrative. And that has got zero to do with the entity known as Jesus, or Mary Magdalene for that matter. But Fritz went on and said there is a big danger in labelling the conspiracy Jewish. And I agree. And he said when people label Jewish as bad, it confuses more than clarifies the Jewish people are not the enemy. And I agree 100% with that statement, as we've stated many times in From Russia With Love. But these people are not Jewish. These people have used the Jewish people as pawns, as much as they have with the Goyim, as they call us. And then Fritz says, next, although many of the satanic hierarchy claim to be from the house of David, they do not publicly proclaim themselves as Jews 
In fact, they may publicly take a negative posture towards the Jews, such as Lady Astor and some of the DuPonts have been. Oh, there you have it. They label their own people and discredit them, like we've said all along. And Fritz said it's perhaps fine that Zionism be labelled evil. Zionism includes both Christian and Jews. To be a Zionist is to identify oneself with a movement that the elite has set up and controlled for their purposes. And many in the Zionist movement are like common people everywhere. Uh, no, Fritz, they're not. They want to do what is right. No, they don't. And they have simply not gotten the bigger picture and are being used. I agree with that. And he said, when two groups have some similarities, but each wants to keep their own identity, they can be mortal rivals. One group that has been very easy for Satan to provoke against Christians is the Jews. And he said, perhaps no group of people has hated Christians with more intensity as one of the first groups that Satan worked at controlling were the Jews. This is where Fritz was perhaps short of the knowledge that we at THI have. Well, you ought to remember this is 30 years ago. Is the dark forces which can be represented by labels of Satan and Lucifer and all the, all the rest have controlled everyone. And the reason that the Jews hate Christians is because that is the white race we covered in From Russia with Love 1 and 2. And because I say white race does not mean white only people. There were several colours in it. And also the reason is because Christendom is a fake copy of the Jewish-based religion of law, is why. They know, they are taught, that Christendom is a fake copy of theirs. Fritz said, but to call the conspiracy Jewish is misleading. The father of it all is Satan. It is satanic. And it will use anyone it can. And God will use anyone too. But the great question is. And seemingly oblivious to Fritz is. What has God done to stop it? What you've got to remember is. We are told that these gods. These are God's chosen people. But never ask, which God? Or why did God choose one people over others? Why has the same God not protected the Jews from their suffering, poverty, death and torture? Oops, there I go again, common sense. Fritz then says, how many of us have escaped help in one cause or another of the establishment or in being in some organisation that the establishment was using? Well, Fritz, religion of all denominations are organisations of the establishment. And the evidence is absolutely overwhelming. But because you declare or he declares, or any other person declares themselves a Christian, you are blinded by it. And that blinding is the false light of the illuminated ones. It's trickery. The sleight of hand. Fritz then says, let each of us examine ourselves and get our own lives in order. And I agree with that. But we must drop the labels to do so. It just becomes a divide and conquer program. 
and he says there is a song about a violin that was going to be auctioned off cheaply until a master violinist picked it up and played a good tune on it. Don't auction people off cheaply, he said. The touch of the master's hand can turn anyone into a beautiful thing. But who is the master? Don't reject anyone who will let the master's hand tune his life. This is a war against evil, he said. Not ev every one of the most evil bloodlands is on the enemy's side. Many are trying to serve the Lord, he said. Oh dear. Fritz. Yet again, have you determined who is the Lord? Why assume, based on a book not written by God, that the Lord is someone to follow? Why is the Lord written in all capital letters, which means he is dead? How can you follow a dead person? And for those who are new to THI, the Lord in the book is Anu, king of the Draco. And then he said, likewise, just because the Freeman family is one of the top 13 satanic families doesn't mean that all or even most Freemans are part of the hierarchy. And this is correct in many ways. A lot of the younger bloodline families, satanic or otherwise, are no longer wishing to play the game. And he said, there may be some disinformation put out on this by the other side after this comes out which is the book so don't be taken in by the their establishment and he said a descendant of joseph smith jr who was a satanic ritually ritually abuse victim was quietly told certain people that her family is indeed a satanic bloodline Joseph Smith is the leader of the Mormon church. Further, I have mentioned other confidential pieces of information about how the leaders of the Salt Lake City Mormon Church, LDS, are working with various parts of the Illuminati's empire, including the Jehovah's Witnesses. Well, I never... Although the public split occurred between Mormonism and Masonry be before the Mormons went to Utah, that was only for public consumption. The leadership have coordinated activities. And the Mormon religion is really a high right, R-I-T-E, of Freemasonry, free and this explains why the Mormons went to Utah and the Mormons held Masonic schools. And this is covered in a book. Hosea Stout mentions these Mormon Masonic schools in On the Mormon Frontier. And after going to Utah, Brigham Young contacted the chiefs of Freemasonry in England and proposed that Mormonism be granted a public charter to become its own Masonic Rite after the hierarchy told him no but after that Brigham Young began to publicly distance Mormonism from Masonry and the Masons strangely broke many of their own rules to distance themselves publicly from Mormonism now the LDS Apostle Reed Smoot was given permission to run for office by the LDS Church and President Harding he who signed up America for World War II in 1923 appointed him to the World War Foreign Debt Commission and he also served the elite as the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee Now the War Finance Corporation just happened due to Smoots arranging it to give the LDS Church a $10 million loan 
all keep kept in house. You see, house being the hop operative word. A mariner S. Eccles of an old elite family and a Mormon and Illuminatus became the Secretary of Treasury in 1934. You all, well, all Americans will know what happened in 1933 and was Chairman of the Federal Reserve Board from 1934 through 1951. Ezra Taft Benson, later the LDS president, was appointed Secretary of Agriculture. David B. Haight, a prominent Mormon, was made the head of all the mayors in the San Francisco area. The full title is Governor of the San Francisco Bay Area Council of Mayors. The Mormon Charles C. Cox was put in charge of the Securities and Exchange as Commissioner. And the list goes on of many other Mormons who have been placed in key establishment positions. Why? Why are the Illuminati and their establishments not afraid of these Mormons who have leadership positions in the LDS Church? And he said, this is a whole area I would love to explain, but as this article is digressing from the Freemans, I need to return to the subject being considered. And then he said, the Lords of Anjou, A-N-J-O-U, part of the PDS, Parari de Sion, were Plantagenets, and so was one of Brigham Young's ancestors. Eric has said, all in-house. And it's the same if you go th back through the Goddard and Gifford family ancestors also for those who don't know Anjou is one of the three families or houses of France that represents the three lines on British sportswear so yes your three lines song is all about celebrating the houses of France including the house of Orange David Rockefeller was another psychopath. Um, was part of the Lucis Trust management. Now the Lucis Trust puts out the book Externalization of the Hierarchy by Alice Bailey, which spells out the plan for the Satanists and New Ages on how the spiritual hierarchy, which is actually the demonic hierarchy is to externalize their rule of the planet Bailey was in with Crowley remember and what that confirms is our from Russia with love where I stated the new age plan written by Blavatsky is another one of these illuminated ones was the the replacement religion for the followers to follow. And the book gives quite a few details of the plan and is used as a textbook for New Ages at the Arcane Schools in New York, also in London and Europe, on how the New Age, one world religion, one world government will be brought in. And if anyone doubts the Rockefeller's commitment to Satan, Read page 107 of Externalization of the Hierarchy, whereby Alice Bailey, president of the Theosophical Society, which um, Waldorf and Steiner were part of, same people, I know some people don't like me saying that, but it's a fact, and were part of Lucis, which was formerly known as the Lucifer Trust, and tells us who will rule when the new age, new world order takes over. On the earthly level, humanity so to speak, the ruler is given on page 107 as Lucifer. And as we revealed in From Russia With Love plus 5 and 6, Lucifer is the god of these Jewish elites. 
it was he or she, because it might be Luciferia, who made them the chosen ones. Which tells you these Jewish elites are not of the light. But on the spiritual level called Shambhala, the holy city, the common ruler is given as the Lord of the world, which we Christians know as Satan. And the Lucis Trust knows it's Satan too, but for the public consumption, they say that the ruler of the world is Sanat, S-A-N-A-T, which is just an anagram of Satan. And that's in Kumara, page 105. And then, after some investigation, and since the Rockefeller family work hand-in-hand hand with the CIA to create monarch slaves, and, of course, that part of the CIA's misdeeds gets overlooked, but a recent convert from Satanism, Michael MacArthur, has given validated inside information about the FBI and the CIA programs which kidnap children in order to supply satanic rituals with sacrificial material. And the names of the agents who spend their official government time <coughs> kidnapping children for Satanism that Michael MacArthur knows about are as follows. Chucky Mike Peters, FBI hitman in Division 5 of the FBI. Involved with in-slaw case Nicole Hara, FBI agent who adopts children for sacrifice. Under Krieg Satanist working for the FBI. Ken Lanning, FBI agent who adopts children for sacrifice. Nick O'Hara, FBI hitman and Satanist, has covered FBI child kidnappings by murder. And Cape Richardson, CIA agent who abducts children for sacrifice. Now, like I said, these names were all revealed in the 1990s by Fritz, yet how many got arrested and prosecuted? The names essentially don't matter because it's the program that has to be stopped. And in the more modern day terms, Soros, George Soros dying, has not changed the program. And if Bill Gates dies, and some state he did six or seven years ago, the program remains the same. That's why you must attack the program, not the entity running it. They'll pull up someone who the public can attack. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, they all play. The Seal of Solomon, the hexagram. Fritz spoke briefly about this and it confirms again of what we were covering in From Russia With Love. The six-pointed star worn by most cops in America. Why? Because they're all Freemasons. Was not considered a Jewish symbol before the Rothschilds began using it. And throughout the Middle Ages, the seal of Solomon has always been used by Arab magicians, dark or light, both as bad as one another, Kabbalist magicians, Druid witches and also Satanists. The six-pointed star is a dark magician object. And he said one of the few ancient uses of the symbol was on the floor of a 1,200-year-old Muslim mosque found where Tel Aviv is today. And like we've said in our shows, it's nothing to do with Jewish or Israel. It was Egyptian and the off-world beings that ran rampant in that country now extending into other countries of the same region all the way to India 
with one exception. I ran. Funny that, isn't it? Yet another of the Cohen sentences. This was sent in by one of the members. Um, and they wanted me to cover certain aspects of it, so I will. And she said, in a recent broadcast and previous comments have brought front and centre my lack of understanding on the topic of spells and word magic. So she presented a proposal for a future show or two, I don't have time for that, to enlighten those of us who have not grasped this concept. And she said, to aid such an endeavour, I present what I thought I knew. Word magic to me has meant one of several things. Lawyer is trickery with only the power that the legal system grants it through law dictionaries and bar guild practice. And she said the psychological effects of words and phrases as used in advertising and politics and the way a writer attempts through written words to draw the reader into the story and to enhance readers' experience with imagery. And she said the potential of words to wound or heal, to discourage or inspire, depending on the perception and mindset of the one to whom they are spoken. Um, my response to that is, yes, we have covered the word magic. And it is called spelling for a reason. Mistranslations, changing of vowels, slight altering of the words, and the classic being for and of in relation to the United States and also America. And no, they are not one and the same. Who always bothers me with all the knowledge that Anna von Wright has as to why when she's adding new terminology, but she understands this, why does she always keep putting in the United States, which has got nothing to do with America? Nothing. It would be the Constitution of America, not the United States. And uh, the member goes on and says, lawyerese and bar comes from the Latin word for legalese, which is correct, which means babble. That is what legalese means, babble. So if a lawyer tells you he or she knows the law, they are deluded. How can you understand babble? It's not meant to be, that's why. And she went on and said, the Lord of the land, which is once of the sea, is the Lord of the Hebrew Anunnaki. Theirs is not a religion, it's a law. And that exempts all who follow it via the Day of Atonement. That's how they get round it. The law doesn't apply to them. Our law is universal law and it applies to everyone and it's all very simple. Thou shalt not harm, injure, steal or kill. It cannot get any simpler. And the point is common and natural law as applied on the internet are corrupted and also corruptible. And then she said, I equate spellcasting with the witchery and wizardry of movies like Hocus Pocus, Witches of Eastwick, Practical Magic and the Harry Potter series, words, gestures, potions and wands. And with the rhymes and bell book and candle practices of pagans and wiccans and the straw dolls of voodoo. Yes, to all of the above. And the reason they do that is, is them putting it in our faces. And also subliminally 
touting for new initiates. She then said the notion of walking counterclockwise. Does this apply to the Southern Hemisphere too as a loosing mechanism? My answer to that is yes. See the Mecca. Southern Hemisphere. And she said mirrors being a window to another dimension. Yes, they told you that in the books, shows and movies. The project Looking Glass is a prime example. And Alice was the original name of the AI. She went on and asked circles and images and words having an actual binding or other effect even on those who are not aware of them is difficult for me to comprehend. Yes, it is, I agree. It is difficult for everyone to comprehend because it's called secret knowledge for a reason. And you had to dance with the dark to attain that secret knowledge. But not no more, we don't. And the classic bindings is the Bible itself. Covenant and Testament are both binding spell casts. She then asked, how does this come about? I always thought you had to know someone had cursed you to be affected. Well, the answer to that is sometimes yes, but most times people are unaware. And this is why this show has taught listeners how to recognise it and then defend against it. But quite often people refuse to hear their own warnings and messages and dismiss it as imagination or they think they're going nuts. But we have to break down the barriers of limitation, all of us and accept and receive all possibilities of help, and also learn to differentiate of what is help and what is diversion. The more you do it, the better you get at it. She then asked, are what we call demons actually other species and or dead people living in the astral realm and un unable to sustain their own existence, except by either feeding off each other in the astral, or by coming here to feed off of us too, if they have the opportunity. And my answer to that is, yes, they are trapped in the simulation aspect of the astral, of which all non-retarded humans have a cord to that level. If you don't attach your etheric cord by the age of seven, it is referred to as being retarded for the rest of your life and you are unable to progress in this lifetime. And this is why it is important to stimulate and develop the child from north to six. Read, sing or teach the child. She then asked, how did they come here, the astral beings? The answer is by invite only, via ceremonies, festivals, masses, witchcraft circles, spiritual retreats, religious incantations, psychedelic drugs, alcohol, ayahuasca, peyote, mantras, mandalas, Ouija boards, dark magic, light magic are all ways of calling them in and sometimes you can bring them in from the dream time as a piggyback host she then asked are the deceased ones ghosts trapped here in the first place the answer is no they are trapped in the astral with no means to feed in the normal way except to harvest the energy and or a body She asked, and what of those in the place between, etheric, I think it's called, such as suicides? Well, the people who get trapped in the etheric 
are in a coma. And sometimes they return, but often they don't because they're consumed. And suicide is not something people should do, no matter what the circumstances. The consequences for other lifetimes are really not very good, and it should be avoided at all costs. She then asked you, do they also feed off of each other and or us? The answer is they feed off everything they can, but we have a sweeter taste. She asked, the beings from the dark multiverse that possess others to pass from that realm to this, as I understand it, is that the only way they can come here? My answer is, why describe the multiverse as dark? If a verse is dark, that is a happenstance and is solely due to the lack of light. The beings who possess or host come from this universe by and large. Why? Because they would have their astral realms in their own universes to possess and feed. She then said, the one idea I've come up with is that there is some sort of energy component to, to all of this, but I do not see how. Can you explain it for those of us who have no clue? Life is energy. Life is frequency. Money is energy. Labour is energy. And money is a poor substitute for your life force energy. And too many here have made it the new God. And when you fully understand the meaning of life, your own life force energy, your place in the cosmos and how precious life is, then the idea of pieces of paper with numbers on them for compensation for your life force energy will become absurd. You cannot take pieces of paper with you to the next life. You can't take material items either. But you can take one thing always. And that is soul development. Music